John, I'm getting Shakespeare flashbacks what is, every time I hear Queen Maeve or yeah. Is that a reference? Maeve? I see Queen Maeve has been what's the line? Maybe I'm confusing two different backgrounds. Could be. Maeve is straight out of folklore. I think it was, I don't know if it's a, a Shakespeare play or if it was the movie Shakespeare in Love, but one of the poets or the the playwrights, I had seen que made some reference to that as a you're out of your mind kind of thing. He may have. Um, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of legend and folklore that goes with it. And England, all, all through the UK is just, thick with it and you could go from scotland to wales to ireland to great britain and the same critter is called different things but they all have common threads to them hmm. yes and we're getting the first hand thread <laughs> not even cut not even cut oh geez I thought you guys did really well in the Sealy Court. And I thought you showed tremendous restraint again and again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds uh, foreboding. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it's, it, it's so hard to keep Blanca's arrogance in check. Yep. But I think... Even with her spark of eternal rebellion, she knows when she's a little out of her depth. Yeah. If she had continued to get nasty and mouth off with the queen of light and laughter, I was really going to have to smack her down. <laughs> <laughs> like something that leaves a mark. <laughs> any, any queen deserves <clears throat> reverence in her court. And even Blanca knows that. I'm amazed that neither one of you two took an egg. I expected you to take one each. Oh, at okay. least. Robin was tempted. I, know. I was thinking it was going to happen. I thought so too. Nothing here is real in my mind, so there's nothing worth taking. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I think that probably the conditioning slash absolute torture of the Ember Road and all that was helpful. <laughs> controlling her need for a cat that's actually a dragon lizard thing. That was Dang. hilarious that you offered to get her a cat and freaked I, out. Half of I, <laughs> you, you just like a proverbial bull in a china shop when it comes to stuff like that. <laughs> that was Blanc, I didn't say it. Talk yeah. That's as, like almost cat. as good as I don't believe in fate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's <sitting> right there. <laughs> You're fake. Faker. This is all a, it's all a dream. The three of you traveled down what feels like a 20 or 30 foot level corridor. Anytime you glance behind you, it looks like you've started out from a blank wall because there's just nothing to go back to. At the end of the corridor, is a large door peaked split down the middle and co covered in gold filigree do you knock i i, I don't know the no i mean with magic do you can you knock <laughs> uh... I don't I don't know what 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 stands before us in our path um, doors just like you entered when um, you came out of the lobby okay identical doors push through all right you push through they're a little tough to open because they're pushing against shin deep ash 
Mm. And you see a black and dead forest in front of you, a uh, cold star filled sky overhead, um, a chilly breeze blowing through the air that does not disturb the ashes. Um, you see just through the trees is a cluster of some kind of movement, um, the glitter of stones, some laughter, and 10 feet away from you, Banny Elkin comes stumbling out of the ash and the trees. Banny, you see your friends standing in front of a cavern wall. There's no door, but they're here with you, or at least they look like your friends. But Blanc is going. <laughs> I'm just looking around at this place thinking, this is Robin's room. <laughs> The dark one. In the dark one. <laughs> I'm an orphan, my precious. <laughs> yeah. All, all it's missing is the is the mattress on the floor somewhere that's kind of dirty. <laughs> I'm I'm sitting there with a handful of gold and a, a ruby, and I go and and leaf loincloth. No, he's not wearing a loincloth. He's naked. I thought he put his pants in his his uh. He put his pants on. on. Oh no, he put his pants on up in the forest. Uh, I'm naked Here, again. He just well, had a leaf land cloth that he turned into a wallet. Uh, oh oh, I it was it wasn't intention. I mean, I was I was saying it would come to that if I needed a sling. <laughs> so I still have. I still yeah. have the, the, the loincloth on. I just have a handful of gold and a, a ruby, though. But I was I was thinking if I needed a sling, I could use that as a sling. But I don't. He doubt like he may be a little delusional from wandering around in what? here. All dust Not covered. Sure. And that, Make it. He, uh, he I can't speak for Robin, but I'm having a hard time making eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eye's the only thing you can look at. They... Even with the loincloth, you hear... You hear you're uh, clucking with disapproval in the background. <laughs> Is it you? I am the one who reacts to you because you guys just fucking came out of nowhere. Holy they shit! Did. They just appeared in front of you. <sighs> what? Where'd you guys come from? Oh, I will follow that up with some kind of fake gesture that looks like spellcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Such a bitch. <laughs> We're here for you, Fanny. Oh, you, oh, it's you. We came as quickly as we could. You're alive. How did you know I was... I don't even know where the hell I am. You're in the Unsealy Court, if you didn't know. And I, we're, here, we're here to bring you home. I still don't know what the fuck that means. I Aaron takes off his overcoat, exposing his arsenal, and hands you the overcoat. Oh. <laughs> Draping him in it and utterly smothering him. Well... I, I hold up the ruby and I hold up the gold and I say, anybody want this? The coat has pockets. Oh. And then he reaches back and he pulls out his ruined Ragnar, checks it and hands it to you. Oh, oh. <coughs> I've been looking for my That's stuff. Came from. Frown a little bit at Bjorn for his uh, supply of Banny modesty. <laughs> <laughs> Robin also scowled. I button it up. If you wish, I would lift my kilt, and then you will never think of Banny below the waist again. <laughs> what have you but done then, in this jacket? Because but then it, I would ruin you for other men. <laughs> it, it's just this jacket smells like vodka. Uh, it's it's strange. I don't know. It's a very strange mix: tobacco, vodka, m man. Maybe a you little bear. <laughs> you hear a woman's voice cut through the forest. You weren't invited, but here you are without enough decency to present yourself. I I holster the weapon and I turn and look. Is it is it the girl? Is it her? It's from that cluster of activity and voices. We are in the Queen's court, Benny. Mind your manners. Follow me. Ooh. Follow her. You walk out of the trees into what looks like a clearing under the night sky. 
<clears throat> in the center of a field of ash and stray sapphires, all of them the sizes of baseballs, an intricate throne has been carved from an upthrust pillar of obsidian. Crowded around it is a mass of small shadowy shapes and slow moving wings, seemingly faceless creatures with peering yellow eyes. Um, extremely visible among them, because they kind of fade into the background, is a three foot tall man in a green waistcoat and red beard. He's very wrinkled, he's bald and sinister looking. He is holding a curved knife and looking at you like you'd like to wear your guts for garters. <clears throat> There's also a rat-like creature in a crooked red top hat, a long coat, a snout with a blue nose, beady black eyes. He's smoking a pipe. A hairy rat tail waves behind him almost obscenely. And three slender hairy arms with spidery fingers emerge from the coat to clutch a mug, another pipe, and a barber's razor. A fifth arm emerges from the coat to pick his nose up to the fourth knuckle. <laughs> Finally, there are dozens of foxes. Some are motionless, some are staring. Beside the throne is Abigail, standing there in her white nightgown, cradling a fox kit and nursing it through a gap in her gown. Um, she watches you with a pleasant smile and vacant eyes. On the throne sits a slender, elegant fay woman in black and gray gowns, her face a la cara, black and silver hair, a wild mop around her. Her eyes are completely black. You don't see wings, um, and she just exudes a sense of awe and fear. The temperature drops another 10 degrees as you approach all of this. Considering I'm in a loincloth. <laughs> big coat. <laughs> okay. Right. Turn to Abigail Nod, Victoria's she, daughter. She just smiles at you. You hear the woman on the throne says she's so special. Within a year's time, she'll be able to nurse an entire litter. I cradle that Ragnar. <laughs> Reach down to the floor. It is ash inches deep, correct? Yep. And your shin. Grab a handful of it. Let it spill out from my hands and suppressing the need to gesture, but using the incantation, I will turn that ash into a smoking pipe made of obsidian. Maeve claps her hands. Parlor tricks. Excellent. <clears throat> You've come from my sister. How is she? I don't really care. Nor do I. We have that in common. Very well. Then why are you here only because you had to come and see me before you could return to the world? No. Did you come on purpose to ask her from a queen. I understand you've lost a lover, or at least misplaced him. Ugh, Maddock. Maddock is my consort, but he does as he will. What do mm. I care about the suffering of men? Because his suffering infects your realm. Are you not queen here? I am queen here. Uh, and my subjects, I must tell you, they've been having a wonderful time in your world. I imagine so. At that, the uh, little rat creature with the um, top hat snickers and the little man with the red beard just stares at Banny. So red hat army, um, red cap army. Yes, Maddox, Maddox red caps. Yes, yes, get it out. Point towards the bearded man. 
Is he that your... is a that is a leprechaun, not a red cap. Oh. And before you ask, and she points at the ratty creature with the red top hat, that is a fair derg, not a red cap. Oh, you tiresome humans. You get everything mixed up all the time. No wonder your lives are like mayflies. We perhaps do misname things, but you change them so often in our fleeting lives, it is difficult for us to keep track. Yes, and quite honestly, I'm surprised that you understand enough to want to keep track. Hmm. Now I, then, I don't wish to trade. I don't wish to trade insults with you because, as a queen, you deserve some measure of respect. That is correct. Your entourage here and those who have crossed over to my world are becoming more and more inconvenient, as is your um, companion who is loosed there. As I said, what care I for the suffering of men? Hmm. Uh, can I voice my opinion on this? Oh, my daughter's lover. But you've not consummated it yet, have you? I tried. She would How not take me. dare she take a slave without my permission? Well, it's up to you to just get me out of here. Just, just get rid of me. Out, out in my world, though. Just he reaches over and strokes Abigail's head. But I have a new daughter now. I don't think that's yours. Oh, she's mine. Mm -hmm. The moment I exchanged the changeling for her, she became mine. Mm. She's the one who stomped on my foot. No wonder. Okay. What happens to your changeling if uh, Abigail meets an unfortunate end? Mm. This one. Nothing will occur to Abigail as long as she is under my protection. Mm. And the changeling is what it is. It will have its amusement and eventually it will either be sent back into the cosmos or it will return to us. But it has its own mind and its own life. Its own sharp little heels. <laughs> A little girl. So your daughter failed to consummate. Oh, Fia. She committed a great sin against her mother and against the court. I would consider it no. I would consider a, a bargain with you. What kind of bargain is that? Punish that willful nymph so that she never betrays me again. And I will call the fair derg off of your friend, this Constance girl. Hmm. But if your consort is out of the picture, the fair derg has no grasp. Is that correct? No, as usual, human, you misunderstand. Mm. Fia originally wanted the pretty boy mm. that lives at the house. But then she changed her mind and brought you home. Without my permission, she may not take a slave without my say-so. And I would have said yes if she had only asked, but she's a willful nymph and she needs to be punished. And if you punish her accordingly, she gestures at the little rat creature with the red hat, then I will ensure that he no longer troubles your friend. Although chatting in a pot under the bed was quite amusing and all the creatures giggle and snicker. Blanca can't mask her denim for this person and steam is rolling off of her and banny you feel the crackle of electricity oh i 
I'm right there with you. I, we could die here. <laughs> <laughs> So how would you say that I punish? What would be the best punishment that you could think of for your daughter? I tried to. To, to, to take that from her, which she cherishes most. Hmm? What is that? What do you cherish most? Uh, there's a lot of things that I cherish very much, but I'm not sure what I cherish most. Life? A bargain has been struck. Congratulations. Well, that is uh, your will, Robin. I look back at Robin. <laughs> the only thing that you would cherish the most is your life. That's an obvious answer. No, it's not. And it's the, it's the compact that we have now made. Take so, away that which is most dear to her, and I will call off my fair dirk. She didn't learn much of a lesson then, though, does she? It is permanent, isn't it? It is a permanent lesson, and it will amuse me to no end. So in, in what way could we harm such a creature? Because I do not see that we have any... Well... I look over at Bjorn, and then I look away. <laughs> that we can... You are Fair impervious, enough. aren't you? You I are... did not say to punish me, darling boy. I said to punish Thea. But you are of the same blood. Uh, I... She is not a queen. She's not a queen? We of are course. eternal. She is a nymph and a willful one at that. Her entire existence is lived between her legs. Hmm. And yet... And Danny now knows. No, actually, I don't. I'm a little really? hurt by that. It's I'm a little hurt by that. Really? The other option... Look at you. Is, ...is that the pretty boy at the house could be brought in as a slave, at my permission, and my fear dear, she points at the rat creature, could... Have his way with your friend. I guarantee that would be more unpleasant than what you found under the bed. Mm. Well, how about we just think about that for a little bit. And uh, I look back at Blanca. Can we just move on from here? Do we have what we need? She's smiling and stroking Abigail's hair. Abigail is um, staring with a... Simpleton smile and glassy eyes. She's been charmed. Blanca will use silent spell to take away the verbal component as she puts a spell on herself. What do you put on yourself? Blood Vendetta. Oh. I'm not what? familiar with this spell. It is a curse and it uses necromancy. She is pissed as hell and she's drawing on her darker powers. <sighs> You're in the right place for that. Uh, <laughs> plus two. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, it generates a reaction spell to those who attack her. Um, it is a... It, it, it's it almost will, like a, is it a contingency spell? Essentially, like uh, the trigger is a creature that attacks Blanca. Okay. So they will get retribution in the form of loathsome bleeding that lasts round after round. Lovely. <laughs> Shoot. Are you sure you don't belong here? There is a darkness inside of Blanca that needs her good friends to keep before you in with the other yeah. evil puppies. <laughs> Crazy half fey girl. <laughs> Like a quarter, maybe an eighth, maybe a sixteenth. I don't know. It's, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it goes yeah. it goes pretty deep at that point. <laughs> Maeve uh, looks over at Robin and points at you with a sly little smile. I will hold you to our bargain. Hmm. I will set off at once to find your daughter. M moved closer to the throne. Make sure I'm within twenty feet of the queen. You uh, see the old leprechaun slide over in between 
Mm -hmm. and the fear deer does the same. They kind of both come in together. Study the two of them as much as possible. These creatures are outside of my knowledge and, and understanding. Look at weaponry, look at their stance. Who's the fighter? Who's the caster? What, what am I up against here? You've got a three foot tall man dressed in green. He looks like he's overweight. He's bald. He's got a red beard and he's holding a blade. Um, but there's just a look of pure murder and hate in his eyes. The other creature with the many arms coming out, holding different objects, um, there's no doubt in your mind that that's the one that shat in the pot and covered it in his rat hair underneath the bed. Um, you've heard Constance say that when she speaks to it, it disappears. Mm. So you're not sure where the magic lies with these two creatures, but they seem to have a place of <clears throat> here with the queen. Fair dig. Turn away from the queen and give that creature my attention. Oh, it gives you a sly little rat look, cocks its head. You have been menacing my friend and companion. As you speak, it slips a hand inside of its coat to an interesting location and begins to move it up and down. It smiles at you. It's got rat teeth. You do your queen's bidding, is that correct? It oh, starts yeah. to make a little low groaning sound as it stares at you. You are loyal to the crown? Maeve leans back, crosses her knees. Why are you talking to a fear deer? Hold up a hand in her direction. Oh, like, a, <laughs> like a be silent hand? Yeah. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, she just claps her hands together. It's delightful. Oh, so saucy. <laughs> oh man I only had six shells it would take two to reload Bjorn slides up next to you and like <clears throat> bumps you with his bulk and he says what's bulk? Be careful but if we go we go we don't leave this room without finishing what we came to start if then she will smell that bear musk and you realize that that's not the kind of go he means. <laughs> I smile oh. a child's happy smile. <laughs> oh, you're so Marianne. I look back to Benny. I look over to Robin. I've got my hand on, I've got this, this Ragnar just sitting in my hand right now. I've been rubbing it since we got here. <laughs> <laughs> no one will bend knee in this court, lest the queen do. Maeve crosses her legs again the other direction. This has been very amusing. Shall we speak business instead of insults? For insults, we could do this for the next millennium. Do you have the time? Measure your words, queen, for time is short for all of us. You see the fear deer and the um, leprechaun look at each other and some kind of communication passes between them. Um, she's still stroking Abigail's hair and rests a hand on her neck that may be affectionate or it may be a veiled threat. Please continue. <sighs> You do realize that <clears throat> I turn towards Block and I say this. You do realize that Abigail is probably a lost cause. Like I'm not here for Abigail. I know. Maeve looks at you, Banny, and says, You're quite wrong. But I am attached to her. I'm marking and I'm hunting the queen with my eyes. Uh, fair Derek. <laughs> You're doing the same with the fair Derek? I'll, I'll, I'm looking at the, well, actually, I think that Blanca has the fair Derek, but I am going to uh, look at the lepre leprechaun. I am up and down. He's been looking at me. 
It's true. He can dance. I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at your navel. <laughs> I unbutton that button just for yeah. him. All there you go. Your lucky charms. <laughs> Maeve leans forward, puts her hands on her knees, and says, Children, before this goes too far, and you regret it for the rest of your existence, <laughs> shall we negotiate? For that is why you've come, is it not? What are we negotiating? I'll just turn and... I, I know that Block has got this, this engagement over here, but... What are we negotiating? We want your consort out of our lands. Matic. Yes, that's one. Now that we've seen what we've got here, Abigail is not yours. I am not your daughter's slave. We've trespassed in so many ways. Maybe we can make this right. I absolutely agree. And I appreciate your willingness to negotiate. Therefore, my daughter has certainly trespassed. And if you wish for the fear deer to go away, dispose of her. That is bargain number one. Number two, <laughs> Maddock. Maddock is his own man. But it's my understanding that you dispatched one of his red caps quite easily. So Maddox shouldn't be too much of a trouble for you, you heroic, fearsome folk. I thought that that was the bargain in exchange for your daughter's uh, existence. No, no, no. no the fear dear is for my daughter. Maddox, I wish I could help you, but perhaps I can. Because, of course, there will be gifts. And then she says, and Abigail sadly, is not mine. And I will return her to you and call home my changeling if you can defeat my champion. Who? Is it, a, is it all of us? Or is it just one? Oh, the the four of you will certainly be needed. <laughs> Against your champion, who we have not seen. Yes. And if you make this pact with me, you will be able to meet him in the forest on your world. Which would give you the home field advantage. Not like what it matters it? at the moment. I turn and look back at it everybody else and 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 check eyes check gazes would they uh would you be up for that i mean robin's not flinching but she does not really know what she's getting herself into i have no idea what we're getting into <laughs> you can tell that the queen of darkness and silence knows that and is highly amused that's I turn, the part that robin doesn't like <laughs> i turn back to her and say if this is your champion and we remove it, then what's to say that we're not going to come here for you? Do you not understand how all this works? And then she looks away from you like, I probably shouldn't talk to the retarded kid. <laughs> and looks at Blanca. You come and go from my throne room by my good graces and by my permission you do not enter the seely or unseely court without my sister and i's joined permission but you do not leave our throne room without our permission so there would be no coming back for you hmm. you so make can... a bargain or not or we if just you, yes. make a big mess here? Briefly, <clears throat> but then we would all just go somewhere else and you would be trapped here for eternity. 
which would not be very long for mortals if we did not wish it to be so. I've heard a lot of whispers of forever in these forests. And turn to Banny, putting a lid on my anger. Strike a bargain. That we'll, one? We will meet your champion in the forest. And if you defeat him, I shall return Abigail and call back my changeling. That is one. That is one. We can deal with your wandering lust partner. We will see him gone ourselves. No further deals necessary. Excellent. Attic. I will watch with great eagerness. Now, as for your friend at the big house, do you wish her to become the consort of my fair Derek? Let... I'm... Somebody else has to make this decision because Constance I can't. is part of the first bargain. You withdraw and leave my friend be. But that is with the bargain. We kill her daughter. I don't necessarily feel like killing her daughter. But <laughs> if any of you want to step up to that challenge. Fear dear doesn't feel like giving up Constance. But will at does... your command have some rather disturbing proclivity. Yes, I've noticed. Stinky rat boy. Um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily have any ill will towards your daughter other than the fact that she brought me down here against my will. Wait. And Maria did it all without permission and must be appropriately punished. Yeah. I look at Blanca. What say you? She means nothing to me, and in this realm, she doesn't really exist on our realm. Let's be done with her and move on. Is that a bargain? I won't accept it, but you can, Blanca. Are you able? No, oh, I'm just saying. I... No, she's asking Blanca. I take the bargain. Because I kill her. What? We... I will do it. I will kill the girl. Okay. It won't be the first woman I've killed. Mm. Um, okay. Then we have all three bargains struck. She sits back and claps like a child. Excellent. And now it is time for gifts. I cringe. Well, what, was the, what was the other gift? I'm sorry, what was the other gift? Was it a bargain? Nymph daughter for Fair Derek stops coming in. Kill her champion, then Abigail will be returned. The changeling's gone. What do we have to do for the third one to be able to prevent Maddox? Maddox, just get. Uh, kill. Just just try to kill Maddox. Maddox is Maddox. Okay. Yeah. Return Maddox home. His own bargain. It's not really a bargain. It's just like you kill Maddox, he won't be there anymore. Yeah. There you go. A very dark creature emerges from the trees. It looks trollish. Bjorn makes a growling noise at it when he sees it come out. Um, it just lumbers. It's almost the same size as him, but it's all hunched over. And it is carrying something draped in black satin. It's probably about the size of a hardback book. He brings it forward and holds it up to the queen. And she reaches out and plucks the satin off of it. And it's a simple wooden box with a silver catch and a rune carved into its lid. What is the rune? She gestures to it. Do you speak Fay? Uh, in ten, if you give me ten minutes, I can speak in any language. <laughs> <laughs> can you hum me a bar? <laughs> what if we? What, what if you just give us a description of what it is? <laughs> she says, "Open this near an enemy in your time of greatest need, but beware, for it is quite powerful." 
And that one goes into the locker. <laughs> you mean uh, Bjorn's back? Yeah, back? yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was kind of thinking the whole, uh, you know, Indiana Jones and the, you know. He takes the box Ark from of the, the troll creature and kicks the troll creature in the shin, <laughs> making it whimper. <laughs> he pulls some rawhide out of his pack and ties it shut. Not Good trusting man. the little catch because there's no lock on it. It's just a little catch. Yeah. jewelry box catch. <clears throat> and then he stuffs it into his pack. It's an interesting gift. Who has it? Bjorn. Bjorn. Bjorn's carrying it. I, I would really appreciate my things. Clothes, <laughs> equipment... <laughs> But I guess I should talk to your daughter about that. No, I have it. Oh. Shall we make a bargain? <laughs> we, what bargain? She smiles with her perfect teeth. <laughs> oh, oh, you humans, you have no sense of humor. She gestures at the troll creature and it <clears throat> lumbers back into the trees and lumbers back out with a burlap bag. See? What a nice lady. Which he drops in the ash at your feet. <laughs> I pull it open and I unbutton the the overcoat. I hand, I unceremoniously strip, hand over the, the jacket to, to Bjorn, drop the loincloth and just start putting everything back on again. This is the second fucking time I've done this tonight. All your stuff is in the bag. Uh. Not folded neatly like oh, people did. Yeah. I'll, give, I'll, I will give dress. him the privacy he doesn't give himself. Yeah. <laughs> Robin <laughs> doesn't. A hundred evil puppies <laughs> stare at you. <laughs> and one Robin. Right. Um, Bjorn puts his overcoat back on and the queen says, is there anything else you wish? That's it one. Any other boon I could grant you? Oh, I mean, I just, her, sister, her sister did give us three gifts. I'm just uh, saying. You've got, you've done so much for us up to this point. I, I don't think that we could uh, receive any more. I hand the Ragnar back to Bjorn. We he better shows. leave Queen of Darkness in silence. She gestures to an archway you didn't notice before. That will take you home. Take Good the luck. Door. If I can make a suggestion, kill my daughter and Matic first before you face my champion. Otherwise, you may not get those two responsibilities completed. Now, where are we going to find your daughter? Because she is no, is she down here? Is she, she's not upside uh, on you our. You will find her somewhere near the house. For she is still enchanted by Lyle. And you proved an unfit suitor. I wonder why. So willing. So willing. <laughs> Let's, we'll take you that. You will find her. And if you seek Matic, search the ruins. My lady... The it has been. We'll find you. An honor. <laughs> benevolent, benevolently. Shoot away with Just you. Start walking towards the gate. Hopefully, everybody else, you know, does their genuflecting or whatever else they do. <laughs> Robin is genuinely impressed. Moving Blanca and Robin forward, saying, "We need to leave while we still can." <laughs> Take, pick up my hubris and carry it out with me. <laughs> it gets here all the time. Yes. Yeah. You enter a dark corridor, but it does have the little blue orbs floating about. It's on a steep incline, and you climb for a while. You're not quite sure how far. 
before you start to see light up ahead? The train. There's a train. It's a train. <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I I I have been going through my weapons to make sure they're all loaded as I'm walking, and if it's sunlight, I'm, uh-huh. I'm gonna start stepping, you know, quick stepping because I, it feels like forever. It's still five foot by five foot, so probably not unless that's different. No, it's five foot by five foot. It's still green and white tiled, and it looks like it's going to exit with a narrow, peaked opening. Um, in some kind of wood, and you see green trees, grass, and sunlight out there, and you smell real air. I charge through it. <sighs> you charge through it. Your yeah. friends follow you, and you realize that you've all run out of a tree. But as you turn and look back, there's no way you could have fit out of the crack in that tree. And as you touch and explore it, there's no way to get back in. And you see that this is a tree facing the back of the manor house. The polo field is on your left. The stables are on your right. It's about a five-minute walk to get back to the gardens, ten minutes to the house. Banny's taking a moment, and he is going to let out a string of curse words. He is just going to drop every word in the book that he knows right now. Don't forget these words also in Galen. Yeah. No, he's, he's just going to... And and then... And then just starts stomping towards the manor. Just yeah. want to let you know that we came for you. And so it's good that, you know, we could have these bargains for you. It's good. Thank you. Warren looks at Blanca. He's a little ungrateful this morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Mark on my Start line. a gentle rolling laugh, releasing all the venom that I was holding for the queen. Just having Banny back and seeing that, hearing that string of words. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking God damn it! His arm around Blanca's shoulders and says, uh, "You have the temper of a true shield maiden, but sometimes." It is misdirected. I know. I know. I I should have guarded myself better, but... If you were to use your anger to bring about a berserker rage, then it would have benefit for you. But I don't think you can do that. So you need to be a thinker and let the rest of us have explosive homicidal rage. <laughs> Or at least me and Robin, not the crybaby. <laughs> Curse baby, he's still going. Why is he so angry? <laughs> You'd be frustrated too. <laughs> we walked away with presents. Uh, yeah. <sighs> presents. We should check on the household before we go off on our blood vendetta. Nuts, pink berries, mint leaves. Mint leaves. Can you interpret what they're going to be any good for? I will, look good at I will look at them in the household when we are safe inside. It is daylight? It oh. is. And as you check your watch, you see it's about 10 a.m. Oh, mon dieu. I'm just not sure if it's 10 a.m. the morning after you were in the woods or otherwise. Or it could be years later. Let's check with the household, then I'll look at our gifts, and then we will make a plan. You enter the household. It's very quiet. All the furniture is covered in white sheets. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would be very no, cool. No, I right? slept too long. Yeah. Um, Everyone is dead. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. The servants are busying themselves about the house. Um, you don't see any of the family members, but you're not really sure what their daily rhythms are like anyway. So Only Bjorn and Robin do. <laughs> well, That's you know what the rhythms of the servants are. Yes, the servants, yes. The family members, who oh. cares about servants? Who knows? 
Uh, Robin pats Blanca on the shoulder and says, your vacations are truly the best. I'm going to wash up. <laughs> you won't be able to wash this vacation off, I promise. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's dark and silent, and I feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, my God. There is no such thing as leave or holiday. There is merely a change of venue. <laughs> I went and I enjoyed horses before. <laughs> now next time you run into a dark goddess or whatever <laughs> those things are, I, I'm i going to do a little research, but I, I will never, I don't think I'm ever coming back to Magnetia. I don't, I don't ever want to be here again. There's a reason you can't stay more than two weeks. <laughs> What's to say we haven't already stayed two weeks? We got to figure out what day it is today. Let's hope it's the same day. I would love to hope, but hope is not an actual reality. Fanny, you're the one who's most full of hope in this group. Yeah. If you relinquish hope, no one will hold it. Well, everybody, no, no, you guys can hold it this time. I just went through a lot of shit. I don't know if you, I'm just sorry. I, 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 have to, I have to go back and forget several moments back there in order for us to continue the relationship that we have. <laughs> That's you true. can't you can't just I tell mean, Abigail. Oh, I was thinking of me in a loincloth, but you know, or not a loincloth because I had to get dressed. And honestly, I'm sorry. I don't mean to get an audience, but I recognize that you might have had some trauma and that you weren't thinking straight. We'll and start over fresh. Take a deep breath. We move forward. Now. And you accepted us, points said Blanca and herself, at the carnival. So it's even. Wait, what? Oh. You yeah, do, see, you forgot already. You do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> I do my my thing. Hmm. It's just that it was it was extra disturbing for me because... I no. I mean I was entranced. I was I was lured into this place and I could not stop myself. And I just get these vague recollections that there's something that happened. But you know what didn't happen? Anything. It was just me being lured down there and and deposited in this place of ash and thorns and dead things. And I saw you, Blanca. I saw you skittering around with stringy hair and this clawed hands and chomping away. You you were you were the dead you, and it was terrifying. And I have that in here now. Maybe and that was a cousin. That's it's a three times no. removed i just i saw things down there that i don't necessarily want to repeat ben, and all, all is forgiven we are reunited again i'm more concerned about what mission stands before us and who we must vanquish to finish our path this queen daughter does she deserve our bill our our she does. i don't know she was going to entrance Lyle and bring him down. So if you have something angry to say oh, about yeah. that. That's enough. Sure. That, okay. I don't necessarily think she was. She's not like her mother. And is that even her mother? I, 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 I just, I, it, I have a hard time with that. As you can imagine. Fanny, Fanny. Fanny. It's, it's fair. It's all and right. And that is it's why right. somebody else has to take that burden because I can't. Bjorn has no reservations about who he kills. And he, he will move forward with this, with or without us. But we need to be prepared for what we're going to do. Yeah, I do it for fun. So, <laughs> I. <laughs> well, it's Odin's next sacrifice. <laughs> Bjorn, I love you, but you need to show a little bit of restraint when it comes to life. I mean, we just can't cast it away because we feel like it. I. A point of parliamentary procedure. What? <laughs> Are you not the one who almost engaged us in death by fairy? I I, I actually agree with what Bjorn's saying here because I, I was willing to it. I was I was willing to go down that road all the I way. I was about to jump with you. Look, 
if I'm going out in a blaze of glory, it's with you guys. I, 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 I trust yeah. that we can overcome a lot. Yes, and I kill the girl. I give you a piece of Norman wisdom. People in glass houses should be quiet before I burn their village and their children to the ground. <laughs> it's a very I, old saying. Mm, I, I, I think you paraphrased. Mixed, <laughs> it's, it's mixed a little. I don't. I don't think. I mean, far be it for me to say that it's throwing stones, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. You can, but that's Benny, fine. Benny, we we understand. Take a deep breath. Benny, Jordan and I were staring we were into the abyss. Were we getting lost in the woods? I well, didn't I, get I lost. The urinate. I didn't he, hear what he, he got taken. About. Bjorn, you remember, and she looks up at you. We stared into an anthill of beings and came to our consciousness. It felt like a month later. Things had happened everywhere. We had our own nightmare. So he had I his don't nightmare. I remember any of that. I remember every detail. Morphine it's is here kind. Forever. Morphine cures a lot of that. Yeah, morphine <laughs> is kind. I'll my situation, I did. I was not on my best behavior. I avoided the, the fox hunt. I really intentionally just moved away from all of it. I ran into a leprechaun with a member that was the size of... I'm member not going to say it. I'm just going to... I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, th there are creatures and beings all over this place. And how but how be it, you know, far be it for me to actually say one of these creatures is, you know, malevolent versus this other one who wanted to offer me, you know, drinks. In fact, I, I have to actually do a little deposit near the third floor suit of armor. I'll be back. I have a solution What's that, that will level the playing field as to which little creatures you can trust and which ones you can't none of them if you kill them all <laughs> then you don't have to worry some of them were actually pretty nice and i had a great conversation with we one of them consider that to be collateral damage uh, i mean you nice can put ones. your boots out with a coin and get them shined up as we're waiting. I well. don't want fairy shine on my boots. <laughs> fairy but I shine. Do want nymph blood on my axe. Uh, With a that's... grin. <laughs> it that is nope. that is nope. fine. I I personally don't think that she deserves it, but you know, it is not mine and we have other obligations. It was my bargain. It is my gift to Blanca's friend Constance. To free her from the curse of the red hat. Rat Why don't we just kill that guy? Just destroy him. He doesn't deserve life anyway. Well, whatever it is. Too. I just don't know how to corner him to do it. Yeah, he's too crafty and he wouldn't be here. That would be the only other reason that we could actually use the nymph daughter and somehow grant her freedom she's gonna die anyway unless she finds her way in this world and i don't know how that's gonna look either because she's a terror <laughs> she is hot so she did enslave you and you remember this yes i she's she's very i glance briefly at blanca she's got a lot of moxie let's mm. say what a chutzpah Chutzpah. Fanny, Robin, Bjorn. Yeah. Let, let's go to the household. Make sure we haven't lost too much time. Get some rest. Go into the ruins at dark. Oh, at dark. You go to the house. You find out that it's only the morning after your excursion into the woods. Um, some of the household is off to the village to do some shopping. Um, the ladies have all taken the train to go back to Clifton to do some better shopping. Um, the Colonel is off at uh, the Roundstone, the little village. 
and Lyle is nowhere to be seen. Cousin Martin is sleeping it off. And the only family members that you see around the house are um, Cousin Hyacinth. And you do see the nurse pushing um, Bruce Ismay down toward his library study. Mm. No sign of Constance? They told you that she went shopping. Okay. We take today and get prepared. We do battle tonight. Uh, okay. You, Any you proposals to... of how uh, we get ready other than try to get rest? We, we need to talk. Because I have been out of action for the last little while. What has transpired? What have you learned? Because I don't know about this Matic character. I don't understand. I, I need to be informed of what's going on here. Especially, you heard the, you heard the queen, correct? Uh, the queen. The, the dark queen. Yeah. The, the queen of the unseelie court. Yes. Yes. That's all the information that's necessary for us to move forward. Maddox is her lover, mm. Our consort. It, it's it's topless. They they. It's so if if there's a stallion, there's a mare. And I think that it goes along those lines. I don't know. She said he could be. You found. should have trotted that analogy out in front of her royal highness. <laughs> oh, you're the mayor. mayor. <laughs> trotted it out. I get it. <laughs> hey, see how you like this one. I'll be here all week. <laughs> but so you have all these other little goodies. What are these from? I mean. I, I just got to see death and decay. What what did you see? All right. So we'll spend a moment around the breakfast table and we'll spread out our gifts and I will expose the reality behind them. Huh? Oatmeal and peaches. That's all that's all I mean. oh, Are we oatmeal are, and peaches? Oatmeal and peaches. Oh, that sounds amazing. Are are you telling me about all the other things that you've discovered along the way? Because I'm just gonna unroll what happened at Roundstone. The, the leprechaun who does the t t Tegan? What you'll, is it? Tegan. You'll be cautioned that oversharing is possible even among friends. <laughs> well, I I won't I won't actually go too far on that story other than <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll you'll save us from I, I I recount the Puka, I recount the old crone, yes, the three. <laughs> Thank you. It was cold. It was, it was cold. cold in that room. Now I remember. They're shrinking. <laughs> he rolled a fifteen. He had a plus yeah. three. Right. At yeah. Least. At least. At least. So just saying. Bjorn? Yeah. Yeah. Bjorn. What is Bjorn? Uh, never mind. Never mind. He never rolls two d twelve plus something. Yeah. Anyway. So what about? Don't invite the jackalope to this kind of thing. Bjorn rolls a D8 to 20. <laughs> D8 to 20. Good God. There's, there's, the there's, it's, it's, that was the gigantosaur. What? <laughs> there's only one thing that Robin feels that that's worthwhile for her to contribute, which would just be that when brought up about the unicorn, um, Petrega was very guarded... She knew that he was fake, and she didn't know if you noticed it or not. But so whether she's whether he was protecting this mythical creature or what. But I mean, the only thing that Robin can think of is like this is a benevolent uh, thing. I thought, or of nature anyway. Just because it is not a harmful creature by nature. Or by design does not mean it is friendly. No, it runs away. I just you know what that horn's for. Pierce you right through the heart, right through the heart. That's what a smile's for as well, Ooh. as we just learned. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's difficult. Would it be wrong if before I killed the nymph, I never mind? We know you'll do what you're going to I do. I will wrestle with that moral. 
Yes. Well, his own unicorn. You can you can wrestle <laughs> as much. I. It, whatever gets the job done. However, I will say. <laughs> Split them open. Uh, because I could arrange death by gigantolope. <laughs> that's. I mean, at least then she might enjoy it. I guess. She's a new. She she. Anyway, Robin, I'm take gonna. A time just, out. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Gonna let I'm that. Gonna go ahead my time out then. Fine. Let that let that slide for a bit. So, but you guys had a conversation with the previous queen. And you know, I I I wish I could have experienced that. Uh, you were talking about fate, correct? We you did. Said... We did meet an incarnation that called itself fate. Thank you. She pulled on a ball of string wound in her skein, which was her way of measuring and touching all the threads of humanity. Huh. Okay. And uh, I'm I'm just gonna drag it out of you guys. She what named she, you. She named me. Yeah. She knows all. Why she would you be an exception? It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and you two were tied together in a very interesting way. Yes. I Your... look at Bjorn and say, "Yes, and." <laughs> it was I don't... uncomfortable. <laughs> just maybe to overstep or overstate the equation you were both naughty boys <laughs> naughty oh i mean there's no such thing as a high five but just like just pat you on the back oh that was good that was so good you trotted out too hard room. robin too hard <laughs> all right sorry it's like we bicker like an old married couple. Yes, I understand that. I, I still am not sure exactly what you guys are speaking of. But the threads it, represent our lives. There were many knots from when we should have died and somebody tied them back together. I know it was Odin's will. I don't know what saved you. Probably <laughs> me. By uh, proximity? Hey. Entanglement. That is as simple as I can put it. Okay. Well, that's that's nice. Now, was there there's something else that she said? Which she? We met many she's. Well, the 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 uh, fate in particular. <laughs> dragging, um, dragging it out of you. <laughs> I know, right? Well, the problem is she I could have gotten what you're fishing for. <laughs> she could have she could have cut us any any time. I don't believe in her, and therefore she was going to kill me? A uh, tortured man. <clears throat> oh. oh, the tortured man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh, Ismay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was paying attention. Out of Somebody's Eric. going full meta here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I... I uh... Then there was Ismay. <laughs> well, so I I will say one of the things I did see in the forest. Who is J B I? Of the Ismays, who has the first name J, middle name B? Does, it, does anybody know the name of Jacob? Of, of the shape. colonel. James Ismay. Who's James? He he's the he's the colonel. well, yeah, he's the colonel. Oh. He's the colonel. Yeah. Colonel. Wait. I don't know his middle name, but uh he he is in trouble. They're going to do something to him. Who they? Who they who? At the old crone in the forest. Uh, washing a, a bloody garment that had the monogram JBI. So they have something of his and they're marking him. He's probably the last one inside the manor house that has any sense left in his head. Yeah, which is really unfortunate because I kind of like the guy. He is very sensible, isn't he? I, I, like I mean, Betray, so you think that he's immune because he is um, 
If we shut this yeah. gate down, maybe, maybe he will be protected, but we should warn him. Hmm. But among other things, I mean, there is so much other things with this place. I don't, I mean... Danny, what do you even warn him? I mean, uh, watch out, you've been marked by the Fae. I, I pull up the, the tessimeter and click it again, and just red, 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 red. It's like, what is this? What this, is this? this I don't think this meter is designed to detect what we're looking for. It's reading something very different, and it's not as scary as we think, but it does represent the problem we're here to solve. Well, it is kind of scary like we think, just different. What does that mean? I mean... Your intentions, Wonka, are on the shoulder. What? What? Don't take a tone with me. Don't capitalize your W's. <laughs> capitalize your W's. He reaches into his overcoat and pulls out a tiny little Easter egg. He <gasps> says, what do I do with this? You didn't. What is that? Is that? Well, I took it from the little purple girl when you two ran out of the room. Oh. I didn't want it, but I wanted it. She backs away. Robin moves forward into it. <laughs> I I don't I don't know what that is. I... It's, it's special. Special? Why did you take it? Because you, know you two were afraid to. You knew not the to touch. Has to have the testicles. <laughs> <laughs> you are not equipped. If Robin doesn't roll her eyes at the same time as Blanca... Yeah, it was simultaneous. <laughs> and the two of you were so fascinated with it, but so afraid to take one. But I know that I can't keep it because Diamond will kill it. <laughs> I mean, Loki. Oh. Uh, check then your pockets. Hmm? Check. No, no, you should take it, whatever it is, Robin. It's just Ch an Easter egg. Don't worry about it. Check your pockets, Bjorn. Do you still have a pocket full of gold and a big ruby in the other pocket? That's yeah. Question. Good lord, that's the biggest ruby I've ever seen. Holy crap. There it is. Well, Where did this come from? Uh, it's, the just a, it's, a, it's a gift. Actually, we're going to hand that in and no, it's well, it's, the it's, vacation. it's, we're it's funding vacation. the vacation. It's funding the These vacation. These are really big, unusual gold coins that don't have a country or denomination on them. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do what we can to maximize what we get out of those. So Melt we spend it. them. Good. Melt yes. it down. <laughs> Reprint, print. I don't know how that works, but we'll do I it. The... What we will do with the ruby. Empires have fallen for less. We're going to secret that away and hold on to Robin, it for later. Robin just keeps looking at Bjorn in just disbelief as she's cradling the Easter egg. Like She just can't believe that he actually did take one. I saw the way you looked at it, but <laughs> I see the way you look at me, too. <laughs> she cradles herself closer to Bjorn in appreciation. All things in time. <laughs> <laughs> he reaches into his pack and he pulls out that box that's tied shut with a leather thing oh. and he slaps it on the table in front of Blanca. What is that? <laughs> what? Text magic. Oh. It detects his magic. Dump it out nut. without touching it. What? Nut. What do you do with it? What's in there? Uh, no, that... I, as, soon as, she, the leather thong. as soon as she starts untying it, what's that? What is that? What is that? Yeah, I guess what's I'm a little here because my patience is thin. And I, you, were, like, you were present when the troll creature brought it out. Yeah. And you heard oh. what the queen said. Oh, you mean that's the book? No, that's that's the, the box. The box. Box. Something you guys have been cool. talking about box. the box a few right. times the already. Box being tied. That's we, right. we don't have to open it to examine it. Okay. But you want to examine the other things from the light and laughter queen. 
it, yes, all of them will spread out on the breakfast table. Okay. And... I thought that you grabbed the box and opened it and <laughs> just dumped it out. I just dumped that out. Here's Pandora's box. Dude. I had a How holy like shit it? moment. Yeah. An unholy shit moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have three mint leaves. Put the basket. Oh. And your detection tells you that they each work as a cure poison spell. Mm. You have two things that look kind of like almonds. You're not familiar with the nut. But your detection tells you that they both function as a remove curse spell. Oh, these nuts. These nuts. <laughs> And there are eight pink berries Bofa? that have healing qualities of 1d20 each. Holy That's a big shit. range. Don't That's give a it big to opportunity me. for disappointment. It yeah, is. it is. Yes, it There's is. no modifier. <laughs> I got and a one! The, uh, the wire-framed glasses are spectacles of true seeing. Mm, with three cool. charges. Oh, so you like gotta like <laughs> use them wisely. Yeah. How long do they last? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Okay. So you can look it up. Block. I'm curious. Do it. How, vi how vital is uh, Abigail to you? Who? Okay. <laughs> that's what she says yeah. <laughs> because I just don't know how likely bargain mm, trois is going to be we have dealt with a great deal of collateral damage since we started taking missions I'm here for my friend yeah Bjorn says and whether it matters or not did we not strike a deal that we had to defeat the champion to get the girl back? That's for Abigail. That's why I asked. I suspect yeah. that even if we decided that we did not want the girl back, we would still have to face the champion. Yep. Yep. Well, you know that's not how a, a bargain is necessarily brokered. It's like, this is the price, and if you say I will not pay it, then you simply do not get that reward. I think you should walk into the office of the best barrister in Londinium and tell him that you want him to get you out of a contract with the Queen of Darkness and Silence. That's more I'm like sure about killing the nymph. Mm. Oh. Yes, speaking of kingdoms falling and big rubies. <laughs> we are going to do all the things that we said we were going to do, and we're going to do them in a sort of order. I think we go with Madoc first to get our bloodlust up. Hmm. I think this, the nymph goes first. Truly? Really? I think I think that uh, Bjorn does that after a sleepover. We follow Lyle. We follow yeah. Lyle. Do you want me to track him now? Or wait, we need rest. First. And Lyle is going to be irre irrevocably affected by this. Like, damaged. Damaged. Way damaged. After this. So, Blanca, who knows? He never sees I think you or... overestimate her powers over him. I mean, you're over him. What happened to me? <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I look at Danny knowing he's been through wormholes of disaster with his women relationships. And he's so <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, you know, he's hey, fine. I, 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 I say, Blanca, do you remember the girl with blue tattoos that walked out of the barn? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's the nymph. Oh, now she wants to kill her. What? That is the nymph. She had Lyle targeted. We go She's... after her first. See? That's why I say we follow Lyle. We follow Lyle because she is going to latch on to Lyle, especially after the massive disappointment I was. Look, we're getting through these items. I'm going to get some sleep, and we're going to war. A servant approaches you and... <laughs> Says Mr. Elkin, a moment. Uh, holding a silver tray. 
I look at the silver. Did you order something special for breakfast? <laughs> he holds it down for you and he said, the third floor maid found this note tucked into your door. I uh, take the note and I read it. On the outside, it says Banny. When you open it up, very flowing script that said, I missed you last night. Hope everything is okay. Let's try again. Oh, okay. I am going to pocket that and I say, can I, can, do you have like a thimble or maybe a shot glass that I can take? Certainly, sir. I, I'll get you a shot glass immediately. Yes, thank you. He's back in five minutes with a nice crystal shot glass for you. Okay. Hey, if you see this on the floor next to the suit of armor on the upstairs, don't move it. Uh, I, they Is probably don't some need kind that. Some of mating guy. ritual for a hyacinth? We should talk to hyacinth, by the way. She seems to know things that we don't actually know. She's worth having a conversation with before we do all this crazy stuff. I bow to the servant. I reach into my satchel, and I pull out the 55-year-old scotch, and I fill up the shot glass, cap it. I got to go put this down somewhere. It's only half past 10 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It doesn't even blink an eye at your weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> Are you heading upstairs? I'm going to go upstairs where the suit of armor is that he mentioned, and I'm going to set it down next to the armor, oh. and I will be back later tonight. We'll As see. you do that, you notice a door in the baseboard. Hmm. It's about five inches high, about three inches wide. It has a tiny little knocker on it, and it's sitting in the shadow of the uh, armor that you wouldn't see it unless you looked into the shadows. I'm going to reach down there and just, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, just rattle the knocker just a little bit. Within just a moment, the door creaks open, and you see a long nose stick out. Makes me a little face. Hey, oh, there you are. Hey, I'm so glad you're alive. I had quite the adventure last night, but this hopefully my adventures today will not affect our meeting. Come I'll, in. Come in. I, I I don't think that's possible, but I come in. Some. Come in. And bring the whiskey. He turns his back. I. Uh, I s move towards the door, but I've just I just set down the the glass and say I can't go in there. I've got I got things to do, but we'll. You hear a dog bark somewhere inside. You see candlelight coming out of the little door hole. I'm it's gonna... getting a draft. Come in. <laughs> I I push open the door a little bit more and just say I'm gonna put the shot glass inside and say later tonight we'll talk. And I shut the door. And Did I, you reach through with the shot glass? I, I, I pushed it in. Yes. And so you are. You're standing there with a shot glass. There's a full-size door standing behind you. And in front of you is the inside of a wall. And you can see climbing up into the darkness are the plaster lathe lines on both sides. Um, oh, I I am just beside myself. Considering everything that I just went through, this is just my heart. There's a small pot belly stove with an impossibly long pipe reaching up into the darkness. There's a couple of chairs, a sofa. You see a bed. You see a bulldog. And you see your favorite critter. The Cornish knocker. He does not have his hat on. He's bald. He reaches for the shot glass. This was bigger a moment ago. Yeah. Dude. Takes I, it. He's your six feet. He's two feet. Oh, okay. Roughly. At least for scale here inside the wall. I actually... I reach into my satchel and I say, you know, thank you. 
and thank you for the information. We've I had quite an adventure last night, and I will talk with you about it tonight. But I have to go back and visit my friends. I smell Fay all over you. <laughs> you go under the hill. Unfortunately, yes. <sighs> So, I'm surprised you're you're with us still. I had to make some deals, and we're going to try and resolve them one by one. So I've met the Queen of Darkness and Silence. <gasps> yeah. And still, you live with with a requirement. Yes. Is she the one you made the deals with? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> She lies. She always lies. I I expect it. Finds another shot glass, pours from your 55-year-old, and hands you one. Thank you. It You're is... going to need more than one. Well, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I We're making plans right now. She, We're going to fight her champion. I'm not supposed to shoot 55-year-old scotch. Sit down. Have a seat. I, I can't stay long. I can't stay long. This is yours. You come in and say those crazy things to me and tell me essentially that my friend has just sacrificed his life. And then you think you just leave and walk away? Yeah, yeah. I'll be back later. I'll be back later. Every, I, I have to settle things here first. There, there's. We're going to make some plans. Believe me. This isn't the will only time I've made stupid. Later, or will you end up a head hanging on his belt? We'll see. We'll see. It is it, it, just, uh, you know, our time together has been wonderful. Oh, He takes another drink. Again, I this is... I see you again. I hope to see you. I did not expect that I would just shrink into this door. I, I, I'm still a little bit. Perhaps my home grew into you, but I doubt it. Man, no. Until later. Cheers. Cheers. I'm sure I'll be able to get another one of those bottles. That would be lovely. I walk towards the door. Put the. Uh, Put the crystal glass on the fl on the table as I leave. Open the door and walk out. You open the door and walk out, and you are standing in the hallway. Oh my god, it's that's... pretty funky. <laughs> you feel like you might throw up. I I put my hand on the wall for a second. Yeah, and catch your balance. Walk One of down. the servants walks by, glances at you like he sees this shit every day. <laughs> Make my way all the way down back to the rest of the group. And I've now got a little bit of a buzz, so I'm, you know, a little rosy at this point. He shows up just stinking of booze. Again. Uh, Darren I'm... says, it's early for you. <laughs> Not early enough. So what is our plan? Who dies first? Nymph? The we nymph. follow the nymph. We follow Lyle. Right. We follow Lyle. I can him. help. Right. If we don't just see him and he's not around the tennis courts, probably I can help Banny and I can help track us to Lyle. Well, that barn. By the way, people keep talking about the vicar. I have been meaning to ask, who is this vicar and what happened to him? Because it seems like bad things happened. Anybody? I don't live here. Shouldn't okay. you ask someone who lives here? Well, I, I was I thought that you know one of you had actually said anything, but we've been locked up in the uh, servant quarters and I understand a quarter of what they say when they speak. Hmm. Well, I only understand a half, so that's good. That's good. Or we have been riding through the woods killing monsters and journeying to the underworld to find you. <laughs> that's true. Has not been much opportunity to question people about the absence of a priest. Okay. Robin uh, gives a long, languid stretch like a cat and just like, we have to have sleep. 
So let's go to sleep then. Bjorn let's... liked that very, very much. <laughs> Robin knows. <laughs> it was half to show. <laughs> he came with egg presents. Egg presents. That's right. <laughs> Uh, John, finish reviewing the item, the treasures we brought back with the group. Mm. Show them what we have if anything's left to review. Otherwise, it's time for bed. The only thing that's left is the box with its uh, single rune carved in the lid. Did we recognize the rune? Did we get some indication on it? It's not a language you're familiar with, but it strikes you as the same written language as what's carved into that the green stone. marble stone in the little village. Brown stone. You know, I know somebody who might be able to read this. Oh. We're taking, are we spending the night? Are we staying the night? It's or are we, it's are we, daytime. Yeah, it's we're, 10 are in the morning. Are we just sleeping most of the day and then adventuring out? I think so. 8, 8 p.m. We'll get dinner and begin the business of the day. Okay. Yes. I'm I'm going to probably do a little investigation outside of that, but we can we can maintain. You I really, can. Okay. Make sure you're fresh for combat. I I don't want you coming in with cuts and bruises. <laughs> More of them. Especially are you, here. Are you saying that I'm I'm hurt? No. <laughs> you are in I'm, need of a sharp room. I need I need something. I just want to speak briefly with Hyacinth and I want to go to bed. I don't know how to exactly arrange that, but I'm going to. Is she gone with the rest or she was disappeared with everybody else? Are you going to ask the servants? Yeah, I'm going to ask around for the uh I'm going to ask for the whereabouts of Hyacinth and I and also Lyle if they know him. Um, Hyacinth is in the salon. And Lyle went riding, sir, I believe. Understood. Well, I will go to the salon then. You go to the salon. There is a um, footman standing outside the salon. And inside, it's a bright, sunny room. And Hyacinth is sitting alone. Um, playing chess but she's got the chess board on a lazy Susan so she turns it and is playing against herself she looks very intense and very curious I I am going and so am I I don't know what's going on at Keyside but <laughs> I'm going to say is that Michael Jackson Barbie <laughs> is that Jackson 5 Barbie Wow, the hair is so lifelike. <laughs> My collector wife is showing off her new trophy. Awesome. I'm sure she'll be poking pins into it, and I'll fill it later. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ow, ow, yeah. uh, uh. She remembers when you had that haircut. So do I. I have <laughs> photographic evidence. <laughs> Those will be burned. <laughs> hmm. I, I walk up to the chessboard and I say, may I play black or white? She flinches and looks up at you like a cornered animal. What do you want? Put my hands up. I mean, I don't want to be rude, but, but I thought I was alone. That's fine. I'm going to sit down across from her. And I'm going to study the board and I'm going to move a piece forward. She looks at you like you've completely lost your mind. She says, I don't play chess. I don't either. You could soundly beat me just by moving. I don't even know if I moved that piece right. She turns and looks over her shoulder. I don't think it cares what moves you make. Mm. Who haunts you? What? Just asking. Who haunts you? I'm sure I don't understand what you mean. I've had quite the night. 
I was out on the moors up until who knows what time. I heard that you went missing. I'm so glad you're back safe. Yeah. It's uh it's a strange world out there. But who knows? Maybe we can solve something. But I I'd like to ask you what do you know of what's outside at night? Uh roll a perception, please. That's a twenty seven. You see Cousin Hyacinth reach out and move a chess piece, but you also notice movement behind her in the room. And you see that about 10 feet away, there's a Ouija board set up on a table. And you saw the planchette move all by itself. The moment she moved the chess piece, the planchette moved. I... I she just says, what do you mean at night? I stand I stay up in the rooms. Well, it's more of you see things differently than everybody else here. And I stand up I'm crazy, but I'm not. You know, I'm I'm inclined to agree that you are not crazy. And I go over to where the Ouija board is. Is there a seat next to it? There are no seats at the Ouija board. Just the Ouija board on a table. And as you walk over there, she stands up very quickly and kind of flutters at her bosom. I'm, I, it, it's, I'm so, uh, I'm so I, terribly sorry. I, 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 I hold up my hand and I just, I look at it and say, who am I communicating with if I use this? Oh, I mean, it's not. It's it's just a parlor game. It's I, I, I. and you hear a little voice from across the room say, "Tell her the damn truth. Tell him the damn truth." And you see that Abigail is standing over there. All two-year-old Abigail smoking a cigarette. I turn and I look, and it's the changeling. Physical. It's Abigail. She's standing there having a butt. I go and I sit back down at the, the chess table or chess board, but I turn my chair and I say, hello, changeling. Hyacinth backs into a corner and points a shaking finger at the two-year-old. You get out of here. Taps the ashes right on the carpet. Do you know I have a bargain? And you're not going to be here any longer? Gone? You might be gone before me. Then she drops it and just crushes it out on the rug. You know, Puts maybe... her hands behind her back and rocks back and forth on her heels. You would be easy to just dispatch right now. In fact, we, it, no, just impunity. I could just take you. Or Abigail could go tell another grown up that the bad man who's visiting touched her in a bad way. We'll that see who happen. leaves first. Sounds good. I look back at Hyacinth. She's just terrified still shaking and pointing at Abigail. Hyacinth, you will not have to be concerned about this imposter before long. I look back at Abigail. And she I is on her way out of the room and she calls back, no one will believe you. And then I she's say, out into the hallway. Oh, I have a gift for you. It's right here. Hyacinth looks at you like you've lost your mind. Do you think that's it's, really your it's sister? It's so terrible. All of it. 
the sounds in the attic, the dolls in the nursery, the tap, tap, tapping at the window for the children's window. It's so horrible. I fear I'll go mad. I don't know how to fix it. They say Entirely. Constance is, is the mad one, but it's me. They've always said it's me. I don't know why you've gotten the brunt of it. But there is something very wrong. We plan to fix it if we survive. But what is in the attic? What are you talking about with the attic? There's something in the attic. It whispers. It knocks. And I think at night it comes out and walks the halls. The children sing nursery rhymes about it, but it's not a nursery rhyme. It's real. It's there. The house is so full of everything. There, there are, are good things here, too, though. You know the little people? I never see the little people. I know they're here, but I can't see them. You need to make friends with them. You know how I to make friends with them? Darker things. I know that poor Grandpa Pa. The families just will not leave him alone. That it really wasn't his fault. <sighs> there is some blame, but not all blame. I, why does he keep the, the memorabilia around him like this? It tortures him. He is so tortured. He blames himself, even though he knows it wasn't his fault. The rest of the world blamed him. He's one man. He's one man who said things to a captain and the captain made the decision. Not saying that he's not entirely at fault because there's a little blame to go around, but not the entirety. That is now, what all the papers always said. <sighs> and Captain Smith isn't around to tell his side of the story. There is no way that anyone could know what he said to Captain Smith. Because Captain Smith went down with the ship. And yet, people quote his statements constantly. He was a great man. He was a director of a steamship company. I have to ask, have you seen the things that haunt him? She nods. They would not haunt him if... They didn't feel he wasn't at, somewhat at fault. But I don't know. They Do they torment him? Or are they just there? Because all of that memorabilia, that little doll in the glass case, probably needs to be put to rest. I don't know anything about any of that, but I know that he is constantly tormented. And he sees them all the time. He tries to talk to them. He tries to explain himself. And yet, there they come, coming out of the walls, the, the room stinking of seawater, and this poor man dying of disease and diabetes. Oh, it's so very tragic. And yet he lingers on. A lot to be said about torment keeping people alive more than it's a living hell for him but I don't know what you will do about what goes on in this house I fear there is there is no hope in saving us and I only pray for the summer to end so that I can go back to London and back to my life of being a mouse in a corner You should uh, consider otherwise, but by all means, do what is most comfortable for you. We will resolve some of the immediate problems, but if we survive, Abigail will return to you as her precious self. 
Will you walk me to my room? I'm so afraid of encountering her in the hallway. By all means. I hold out my hand to her. She takes it very timidly. Just gently grasp it and open the door and where do you where is your room? She tells you it's third floor. It's down the hall from yours. Okay. You escort her to her room? Yep. Where is the place where you could get to the attic? Uh, it doesn't take long to find a servant. Well, and, uh, if she points or if she... I, I don't necessarily want to seek it out too, too much. Are you asking her? Yeah. How to get to the attic? From the third floor, she points to a small door off to the left side just before you would get to the end of that hallway. Okay. Uh, I'll take a look at the door, but deposit her in her room. Do you want anything? Should I get a servant to come and bring things for you? Bring no. anything to you? No. Thank you. You're very kind. And she practically slams the door in your face. I am going to go to my room. Uh, I, uh, I am going to leave a note for the servants and say, as soon as the colonel arrives, have him contact me. Very good, sir. And go to my room and just face first on the bed and sleep. Yes. Robin, are you going to go crash down in the servants' quarters? Yeah, that same room that she had after she uh, does a quick shower. Okay. Yorn uh, wanders off someplace. You're not sure where. Blanca, what are you up to? Uh, I will go to the room appointed for me, knowing that Constance is away. Okay. I'll settle in there. Everything well, is clean, organized. Close the curtains, try to black out the room. I need eight hours. Trying to get some day sleep. Yep. And you all crash. You know, this interworld jet lag really sucks. <laughs> Ain't it? Ain't it a little bit of a bitch? <laughs> Banny, <clears throat> um, you are dozing off and there is banging at your door. Bam, bam. Uh, roll out and walk to the bo door. Open it up and just nobody, look expectantly. Nobody standing there. Do I hear the pitter patter of little feet? <laughs> you don't see anybody out in the hall. Uh, where did the was it the door that was banging, or is there something else in here? You're pretty sure it was the door. Okay. Show yourself. Just look around for a second. You hear a little bustle of sounds like rattling glass from around the corner. Uh, out in the hall? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to step out in the hall. I'm going to give it a wide berth as I move out there. You get down to the corner, and it looks like six or seven doors down. Uh, there is a um, footman with a tray of glasses and a bottle on it, and he's closing a door. It looks like it's all dirty dishes, and turns and makes his way back to the main staircase. Uh, did you just knock on my door? He stops and turns. Sir? Uh, you didn't knock on my door. Oh, I did not, sir. Is it... Is it... Never mind. I'm going back to bed. I'm going to walk back into the room, lay down, or shut the door and lay down. But I'm not going to... I'm just going to stay awake and aware for the next ten minutes. <laughs> Perception. Uh, 
20. Um, you're tired. You're really starting to, to drift. You're drifting. You're having a dream. You're dreaming that you're wrestling with someone in a dark space, but you're not sure who they are or how you got there. But you also notice that it's getting harder and harder to breathe. Um, do another perception. Uh, that's a 28. <sighs> you open your eyes and realize the reason it's hard for you to breathe is because someone's pressing a pillow down over your face. Um, and you feel weight on your chest, but not the weight of a full-grown person. I pull the pillow, yank the pillow out. Let's check. Uh, how's your strength? Uh, it's. I mean, if I'm using athletics, it's good. But do a, just a straight strength. Strength check. Roll. Yep. Oh, 18. Uh, yeah. You snatch the pillow away, and. There's Abigail crouched on your chest. And she goes, damn it. And tries to roll off of you. Uh, yeah. Fuck you. you. Allow, you Get out of here. She Get out of here. The floor, sticks her tongue out at you, runs to the door, opens it, goes out, sticks her tongue out one more time. I'll be back. Slams the door. Ah, how are you going to explain that? Oh, you just suffocated. I, uh, Your two-year-old tried to murder me. <laughs> uh, so I am going to have to find a better place to be if she's going to sit here and torment me. So I am going to sneak into... I'm going to go downstairs, and I'm going to go to the servants' quarters. You go down the stairs? Oh, excuse me. All the way to the basement, startling the servants who ask if you're lost if they can find something for you i'm i'm fully geared i've got my gun sticking out all over the place i mean I, I need a place to sleep and i need somebody to watch the door let me get the butler okay he can solve the problem and they do he shows up immediately sir you seem in distress uh, let's just say I would like somebody posted at my door for the next at least six hours, either upstairs or just maybe let me sleep down here somewhere. Well, it's highly unusual, sir, but of course, do you, would you wish to sleep in the same room as your friend? Uh, if she's not snoring, I would be okay. Oh, or if he's not snoring, either one. I would never put you in a room with a lady. That would be completely inappropriate. But the gentleman is in a double. And the footman requested to move to another room. Oh, well, <laughs> how about this? Just have somebody posted at my door and make sure that the children do not disturb me. Is that of course, sir. There, that would there be are no children down here. Do you wish to bunk with your companion? Uh, no, he's going to be too noisy. Uh, I just so I will take my room upstairs. Just have somebody post it out the door because for whatever reason the children tend to flock to my room and it's very disturbing. <laughs> yes, I, sir. They have an unnecessary fascination with me, and I just need to keep them at bay. He can't help but give you a weird eyeball for that statement. And then he agrees that he will absolutely put someone outside your door. Way to go to feed the changeling's plan. <laughs> I told you he was a man with bad touches. <laughs> yeah. Well, the children oh. are all chasing me. I just need to get this out of out of here i need to get <laughs> this creature out of here she's a changeling and i had to ride her through the forest <laughs> <laughs> i promise <laughs> okay hopefully that'll keep let me sleep you head off to uh, dreamland the rest of you are all day sleeping and uh, i think that's where we will leave you for this week Good to sleep in the basement.
Good to sleep in the basement. <sighs> Waka gets to sleep in her own room. Yay! Wow, this is the first. <laughs> Did you sleep in your own room last night? Oh, no, you I, were together with... Um, Constance. Yeah, Constance, Constance was there. Right. I didn't oh. expect you guys to go into the Sealy and Unsealy court tonight. I thought that would be further down the road. Really? Banny and his uh, dice rolls. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Kind of sealed our fates. Ride the wild wind, Banny. Yeah. That was, Ride was the wild wind. Completely not my deal. It was not. To your credit, you did try the hero point, and that's how you botched. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, even worse. Yeah, you take the be- the roll that you get. Just play the dice. Hero points are for wimps. Yeah. Hey, they Good saved job. my life twice. Stealing gold from a 2,000-year-old homicidal leprechaun. Nice job. <laughs> so that's why he was eyeing me up and down. Uh, uh, just, yeah. I just, I just, I expect to see these things like recurring, showing up in my reality, and I'm like, yeah, curve, nice curve plane. Well, yeah. since they're fey and they're immortal, they can wait. There's yep. no reason that one of them couldn't pounce on you while you're on some mission against Echelon in Paris. <laughs> ah, remember me, Lonnie? <laughs> 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 yeah. Suddenly just, it's psycho. <laughs> just, it's like there, there's a, there's a, a little bit of cold cold rounds or cold iron ammo that could possibly solve that equation of immortality, but I don't know. We were we were ready to try. We were ready to try. Oh, you guys just kicked the shit out of that bar guest. That was quite impressive. Yeah, and we still had Bjorn, and we still had um, Blanca. Blanca, Blanca. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you for not making me scald myself. That was a nice uh, save. Yes. (laughs) True. True. By a split second. Crackle, crackle. <laughs> that was the only thing you guys had to fight tonight, wasn't it? Oh. That was it. It was yeah. more against ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Banny over here punching himself in the face, but. <clears throat> <Ow>! <laughs> but yeah, outside of that, that's. I, you know, the 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 master, no, the Lord of the Hunt or the. Yeah, the Wild Hunt. I, yeah. I was expect I was I was almost I was intrigued to see what would happen if that triggered because that would have been fun. <laughs> I think maybe not. But... Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, then. there was a serious second there where I was thinking, and so this is where we're going to die. <laughs> Everyone's got their target, and here's how we're going to go out: one, two, three. There, there, there was multiple times as you guys were going through this that I felt that way. So, I but, thought so too. I thought Blanca was going to throw down with the queen of darkness and silence. Oh, that. And, and be forever silenced. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. I had my three by five cards ready with different <laughs> names and hit points on them. And I was just waiting to see how that was all going to fall together i was not well prepared for combat either so no, you <laughs> burned a lot uh, well and i didn't even i didn't memorize combat spells i was trying to fight off the fey infestation with counter charms and illusions <laughs> yeah I, I think she's kind of a nasty bitch i i wouldn't yeah i would imagine her. yeah because she's not a nymph <laughs> <laughs> She's a queen, right? Uh, and well, they're especially nasty. They, so that's, that, mm-hmm. that's why I was thinking we're not gonna uh, kill her, but we're gonna take away all of her little accessories, like the bargeist and the the leprechaun. I that's why I was like, we take out all of her little people, yeah, and then she'll have to replace them all, but. 
she probably wouldn't let us live after that point either. So yeah, I mean, it is kind of bad etiquette in the court. Yeah. I don't to kill going. off all the jesters. <laughs> if you're in the court of homeless people, that's still bad etiquette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad form. Bad mm. form. Yeah, I'm just trying to picture the uh, champion of the queen of darkness and silence. I'm sure, like, whatever, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a visual for that combat, so no. brace yourself. Combat? Are you insane? <laughs> it's actually an image that you've all seen before, and that's all I'll tell you. That makes mm. it even worse. Mm. A Tarrasque, huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nasty. No, yeah. now it's our turn to open a gate and make him walk through the middle of the <laughs> Step right in. <laughs> See those no. curds with the helmets over there? <laughs> Sick them. I, yeah. Well, the beauty of it is, is that we actually yeah. have some time pre to prepare. And I am absolutely going to say, uh, hey, Colonel, and all of your friends. Just, you know, you know, line formation when. Oh, yeah. Line formation is perfect for fireballs. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but. <That's right. laughs> and other area of effect weapons. What? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. But that's them. We're going to be moving in different oh, circles. Okay. All right. We'll put them in the red coats and they can march forward in line formation while we attack from the flanks. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> That's right. Half yeah. Ben Wallace, half Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Patriot, bitch. We, you, know, you guys have seen the Patriot. Keith and I went and saw that at the theater. Really? And I will never forget when that cannonball comes bouncing right at the screen. The both of us just like almost flipped out of the back of our chairs. <laughs> So bizarre. It's like, and I see that every time I watch the movie, I'm like, yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. That, that, yep, my head would just pop and everything would be done. I, I was reflecting back to an earlier movie, Glory, where we got to see a bouncing cannonball take a guy's head off. Oh, that's right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. That was a, that's that not was the a, right laugh. Yeah, that's a hee <laughs> <laughs> baby. Well, thank you again, John. That was uh, certainly an exploration of uh, Irish folklore in a way we've never seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I've never seen it. Like, it's always been kind of fruity and flaky and yeah. happy and I've never seen it look like a trailer park domestic. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's about to turn into. Will that be the caption that we use for the uh, for the module? That's right. Tra so that's free. Trailer park domestic. <laughs> trailer park domestic. <laughs> Irish four floor done trailer park domestic. <laughs> We're immortal bitches. Just, <laughs> we're going to be here before, during, and after anything you do. We're going to kill us some fairies and head off to the Walmart. Man, at least we started with the at least we started with the Sealy Court. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you got all kinds of background and groundwork and nemesis, and you stole a crazy homicidal. <laughs> Leprechaun's gold. I, I mean, I. These are things. An immortal fairy queen and agreed to take down her champion. What could go wrong? And kill her daughter. Well, and kill that her. Was, daughter. Yeah, kill her daughter was like that. Was like child's play. Rob was like, yeah, sure. And then like take out her champion. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait what? <laughs> Wait what? <laughs> what? <laughs> See, Benny heard just briefly, like, oh, something. It was a big wolfy thing, and we shot it up. And it's like, oh, okay, so it's fine, right? But so it's fine. The the bar guys, you just think, okay, yeah. yeah. So sure. just unleashed all mean? sorts of. 
Yeah. You guys will take that champion fine. It's yeah. not like you guys. I like you that. guys. <laughs> yeah. Roman Games and Magnetia. Yeah. If you need any help, Clark, I'll be upstairs asleep. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a ranged guy. I, I really, it's like, I do good with sniping. <laughs> From Jeez. another county. And, uh, yeah, I'll be a ways off. Jordan oh. suspects that when you do find the champion, he's going to get wet. <laughs> oh, no doubt yeah. in so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that's coming. <laughs> Very wet. <laughs> Maybe even get full. <laughs> that's right. Not that any of that's a bad thing. You oh. ooh, the heart of the champion. A fey champion heart. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it sounds... it'll be an aphrodisiac for when he destroys the nymph before he kills her. <laughs> <laughs> if this does not get me straight into Odin's gate, nothing is. That's right. He's gonna have to like consult Odin and ask if the unlawful plundering of a nymph really counts. Does it count? I, I touched a fairy, but it was for a good cause. Not like she's a human. I mean, you we get a pass a on sheep. Yeah. You touched a fairy and you liked it. They don't call him wall building Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> or bridge building Bjorn. We know but that. But just screw one goat. <laughs> just screw one goat. And that's all they talk about. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, I'd say that the fairy starfish is tighter than most. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God. We'll edit all this out in post production, right, Eric? Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just start rolling the credits. <laughs> the I, uh, I, I think uh, I think there's one area specifically that we're going to have to edit out. Just a little segment. Every time John speaks, I get yeah. it. <laughs> And then just set it to the Benny Hill soundtrack. You, you, you can't stop the live broadcast. So for a, a couple of weeks, this is out there in the wild. Nice. In the wild. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> what lunatic is going to hang with us for seven hours? Yeah. No one. There's... Maniac. What maniac takes a glance? Oh, my God. There's eight of them. No. <laughs> no. Two of them are priests. What? what? <laughs> Those guys are sick priests. <laughs> oh. So are we on for next Tuesday, fellas? Yep. I think so. so. Thank you. More to come. <laughs> Good night, Yay. guys. We'll see you soon. Good night. Good night. Bye.